Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts with yet another calming, reassuring word for you from the Lord. We are dealing with Philippians chapter 4, starting at verses, it's just two verses, I believe. Starting at verse 6, ending at verse 7, followed by Pat's two cents. Be careful for nothing. Now, when it says be careful, you know, we say, oh, be careful, don't hurt yourself. When the Bible says be careful, it means you're worried about stuff. You're full of care. You're, you're full of concern. So what the Bible is saying, don't be worried about anything. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right. Now, Pat's two cents. What I want to talk to you about is a situation that happened when I was saved maybe about eight months. I had taken care of my father till he passed away. And I kissed him on his forehead. He drew his last breath. When he drew his last breath, his eyes popped open. I realized his spirit had left his body. I called the paramedics. I did everything I could do on my end, artificial, you know, the CPR and all that. Okay. And when I, when the paramedics came, I ran out the living room and I hollered. I mean, I, I was screaming because it was so emotional to me. I happened to have, I happened to have been blessed with a wonderful relationship with my father, a wonderful father, very dedicated. Whereas with my mother, that was another story. You know, she was a good mother, but she had issues. So with my father, it was much harder for me when he passed away because we had formed an even deeper bond after I led him to the Lord on Thanksgiving, during the Thanksgiving holidays. And he passed away that following May, right before his 82nd birthday. Well, <clears throat> I'm running out of the living room while the, I mean, into the living room while the para, paramedics are in the bedroom working on my father, who had already gone. I knew he was gone. And I hollered to God, God, you help me take care of him. I need you to help me now. I was so distraught. I was so emotional. Um, but I tell you this, uh, I got support from the church body. That's one reason why we need to be engrafted with the body of Christ. Whether it's a little group, a Bible study, we need to be connected because there are benefits that come from being connected as well as hurt feelings and all that other stuff. But there are benefits that we can only get by being connected. So what happened was I called one person. That's all I could think to call. They called the pastor. Uh, some of the leaders, some of the saints, some of my friends came over. My family came, my sister and my, and my niece. And what ended up happening, I want you to hear how God's peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart. When we all got together at the house, they uh, called us down to the hospital. We all hopped in our cars, went down to the hospital. Now, when we went to the hospital, they called me to tell me, called me in privately to tell me he had passed away. Well, I already knew it. So that wasn't an emotional moment right there. I knew it. I went to see my father, his body. I told him, I said, I know this is not you, you're not here, but I have to give you a kiss. And I kissed him on his forehead, I hugged him, and then I laid him back down and closed his eyes. Well, 
What happened after that was miraculous. The re I'm taking my time because I want you to really listen. I know some of you have lost loved ones. And you don't understand how God could take your loved one. But sometimes you don't understand that while you're praying, God, heal him, keep him here. I want him here with me, blah, blah, blah. That person is tired. They're tired of being sick and tired. And they're probably, have probably been asking God to take them home, give them their rest. So don't always think God's doing a bad thing when he takes your loved one. He could be relieving them of their agony, knowing he will help you get over it, even though you can't see it right now. Unless you choose to hang on to the morning. Unless you choose to nurture anger and resentment. So here we go. When we got back to the house, the pastor asked if I had any prayer requests. We got in a circle to pray. I had two requests. One was please stop the flashbacks of me seeing my father die because every time I saw it, I relived the agony of, of, of his death. Number two, help me get over the morning as quickly as possible. This was not about me having to deal with his death. This was about us reconciling all possible differences, him accepting the Lord, and me nurturing him through to a deeper relationship with God. God calling him home to total victory, total glory, where he could be in God's presence. Because to be absent with the Lord is to be present, excuse me, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What more can you ask for? Most people, when they tell you they experienced the Lord, they don't want to come back here. Much as they love you guys, they don't want to come back. So, think on that for a moment. When they prayed for me, they all went home. My sister and niece and I went out of the house. My sister wanted to get me out of the house. So we just sat at a restaurant and sipped on coffee. And I'm just running off at the mouth, thinking of every little funny thing, just you know, going down memory lane about me and my father. And all of a sudden, while I'm in the middle of flapping, I burst out in these howling cries. I couldn't contain it. I couldn't stop it. It was a good thing it was in the middle of the night where there were only two or three people in the whole restaurant. I cried my eyes out. I couldn't hold it. It just came. It came on me. I was totally out of control. It came on me unexpectedly, unexpectedly, and it stopped unexpectedly. I cried for about an hour and a half to two hours, nonstop. Couldn't stop it, couldn't hinder it, couldn't choke it up, couldn't swallow it down. It just gushed and gushed and gushed. And I sounded like a wild, crazy drunk having a hissy fit. But all I was doing was crying. And God was crying the morning out of me. Well, let me tell you what happened, you guys. We paid the money after I stopped crying. As my sister explained to them, so they were very sympathetic. We paid the money. We got back in the car. Now the sun's about to come up. We're sitting in the car. We said, oh, let's watch the sunrise. While we're sitting, waiting on the sun to come up, this peace comes on me. I am telling you this. I never experienced this in my life. Now, when I got saved, God gave me his peace. But this was, <clears throat> was that peace that passes all understanding. It's a whole different kind of peace. It's a much more intense, I almost want to say a louder piece, so to speak, a stronger piece. It's hard to put it into words. This piece I was describing to my sister and my niece, it had me 
feeling as if I was suspended in outer space where there was no sound. There was no sensation of motion. There was no emotion whatsoever. I was totally at peace. And it was a positive peace, not numbness, peace. It was beautiful. I couldn't believe I could actually feel that wonderful after such a horrific experience. But God gave me his peace. And guess what? All the mourning that I did, he answered my prayer. He allowed me to mourn all at once to get it over with. There was no more mourning left in me. At that point, he had healed my heart and enabled me to become one with his decision to take my father home. The heaviness, the darkness of death was nowhere to be found. Listen to what I'm saying. When people leave you, when your loved ones go, it doesn't have to be horrific. If you turn to God to heal your heart, if you turn to God to dry your weeping eyes, you don't have to mourn for a year or two or three. You can cherish. But that dark, heavy mourning, oh yeah, you shed tears of sentiment, missing them. But that heavy, dark mourning, God can remove that. I have story number two. I was married for eight years to an adulterous husband, which was my first marriage. I make it very plain because my second marriage, that was a winner. I had me a real man. He was wonderful. Now, remember I told you before in the other video, sometimes you can be in the center of God's will having obeyed him to the, to the letter and things still go cuckoo in the night. Yeah. But God has his purposes and sometimes we don't see them right away until we begin to notice our own growth. Well, I made the mistake one night of asking God to teach me how to love. Teach me how to be more merciful. Give me a merciful spirit. Enable me to love the way God loves. God began to answer my prayer. He called me into a marriage with a very kind-hearted, tender-hearted human being who was very good, very, very gracious, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Treated me wonderfully. But he had one issue. He wasn't hooked on crack. He wasn't hooked on cocaine. He was hooked on pornography. X-rated whatever plus prostitutes. So as a result, I had to go through a very difficult Three years. I gained so much weight from worry, anxiety, and <laughs> medicating myself with food. And God showed me what I was doing. When I saw what I was doing, I repented. And after I repented, God began to help me. I went out in the backyard one night. I held my hands up. I told the story before, so I'm going to make it quick. I held my hands up and I said, Lord, here, this is my hurt. Here, this is my betrayal. I went down the list of everything I had been going through. And I said, you take it. You take my husband. You take the adultery. You take the betrayal. You take my insecurities. You take my hurt, please. I can't carry this anymore. It's too heavy for me. I gave it to God. The very next day, listen to the miraculous power of God. See, when he calls you into something, it may not be something that's perfect. It may be extremely flawed. But what he's going to do in you 
is something phenomenal. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. So that prayer that I prayed, God, teach me how to love the way you love. Give me a heart that forgives. Give me a merciful heart. I had to do both of those things big time in that marriage. Forgive, 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 forgive for eight years. Love, love, love. Come home. He's all ridden with, with guilt. He confesses half the time. The other half the time he's slipping and sliding. And all God gave me was a heart of compassion because he was in a quandary he couldn't find his way out of. And even though he was good to me, he was kind, he was a sweet person, very sweet, tender person, had a real compassion for retarded people, for, for, for uh, developmentally disabled adults. He had such a heart for the underdog. But he himself... He couldn't get the victory. And one day, God told me, you handled this my way. I'm saying it in essence. He didn't say verbatim. You handled this my way. I release you. I've done inside of you what you've asked. Now you can move on through you, the growth that you have from this experience and what I have imparted into your heart. Now I have a new level of love, new level of mercy. I have practiced forgiveness so much I got pretty good at it. It happened real quick from time to time. So I say all that to say, God works everything for your good. Every single thing. What he allows is going to work in your favor. There will come times, and there have been times, where I have had to minister and will minister to other people who have adulterous situations. Help them navigate through to the Lord where they can get their healing, they can get their peace, they can release it, they can stop hurting, even though the situation hasn't changed. Do you hear what I'm saying? God can bring peace to your storm within, even though the storm is raging without, all around you. And when God lowers the curtain and ends the play, you are released. And you are a thousand times bigger of a person than you ever were before you went through. And you're not hurting. You're not licking your wounds. Oh, 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 woe is me. Look what happened to me. That wasn't fair to me. I don't believe. Oh, oh, oh. No, <clears throat> because you gave it to him and it stopped being your problem. Try that. Try giving it all to him. Don't try to carry that by yourself. You do not. Have the muscle power. Your heart can't take it. Give it all to God. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. God bless you.